look at uh, the cash outstanding in the world, there's tons of it. It's mostly in large denomination notes. $100 bills, there's more than 4,000 for every man, woman, and child in the U.S. And we're printing Same more constantly. Oh, we print more constantly. It's a big business. But 80% of it's in hundreds. In a lot of countries, it's 90% in the big bills. This is a physical story you're talking about here. It's, it's a very simple, practical point that cash is a very good way to port, hoard, hide for crime, tax evasion. And the evidence, I think, is overwhelming that that's a lot of the use. So I'm trying to sort of find a sweet spot where ordinary people can use it to buy normal size retail transactions, but it gets used less for the, tax evasion. The argument, I'm, though, for, for cash, electronic cash, has been that a lot of that can get moved around, too. The whole secrecy that goes into Bitcoin was that, oh, people can use this for untoward reasons without being tracked by the government. So you have to play whack-a-mole with all these things. And so there are always going to be these other things, gold coins, uncut diamonds, now Bitcoin. But as long as you can't go spend them at the store, take them to the bank. But you can't. Just... I mean, with Bitcoin, that's the difference. People use it for their rent. They can pay, buy it's, all it, kinds of things the, online. The, it's a very low scale now. And you can't go into the drugstore and use it. And they'll, they'll prevent it in the future. They're, you know, allowing innovation. So when you... But, but you don't want us to go to a cashless society. So when you talk about the sweet spot, what does that even mean? No, because, I mean, there are a lot of issues they rent when you try to think about actually getting rid of cash. They range from privacy, what happens if you have another Hurricane Sandy, to some philosophical issues about can the Fed control the price level. And so I think leaving some around indefinitely makes sense. How much cash do you have on you right now? <laughs> less than I'd like. I mean, I... I do you I, think people should carry on? I actually oh, carry on no cash. I, I think Meaning there's I'd nothing... Meaning I'd be a very bad target I, for anybody. I want to be clear. Why? This is not a moral... I think I might have $20 on Why? me. Why? Maybe. <laughs> do you have a wallet? No, I don't. Actually, these days I don't... Because I don't need it. <laughs> what do I need the money for? Here's a $20 bill. This is all I got. You're a mess. Yeah, and you got no belt. You got no wallet. I got this. I got, got the wallet. No, no. I have no a wallet. wallet. I have a Metro card. I, I American it. Express card. I don't want to put the number no, up, yeah, right? Be careful. And no, uh, that's kind of a wallet. But it's just no. Uh, it's just a little wallet. It's an a, ID. It's a um, what else? Library card. Uh, uh, that kind of stuff. So library card. I have a lot of ones and a ton. But my point is that you can get away yep. with actually not having cash you anymore. Can. Yeah, but, for and, the most and, part. I, and it is. All the surveys show, even in places like Germany and Austria, where they love cash, they just use a tiny fraction that they're carrying around of what's outstanding. A lot of it's in the underground economy. A lot of it's tax evasion. And the, the scale's just stunning. And there, there are other issues, like with monetary policy. Is that the same? Uh, you talked about Europe and Germany. Is that the same here in the U.S.? Oh, more so in the U.S. More they so. use twice as much as we use. But these $100 bills, these U.S. $100 bills, uh, for the most part, actually aren't even in the U.S. No, no, that's not. That, that's the not true. The Fed used to think that. I wrote about this first 20 years ago, okay. actually, and the Fed thought that 70, 75 percent of it was abroad, but it's not, because you see that it's the same thing for everybody. Everybody has all these big bills. We're not even a big ca cash-printing country compared to Japan, for example. Do you know how much it costs to print cash? It's, it's very, it's very, it's profit-making. The government makes a fortune off printing cash, and my point is it's, penny wise and pound foolish because they even if you got back 10 percent of the tax evasion the irs thinks you would not to mention the cost and you know reducing crime by five percent it'd be a big win and, and there are things like illegal immigration by the way where that's cash driven if you couldn't pay in cash it wouldn't drive all the uh, illegal immigration hmm. Kim, what, what kind of um steam is this picking up with people in positions of power? Do they buy into this argument as an uphill battle? There is a lot more interest than when I wrote 20 years ago. When I wrote 20 years ago about it, Bob Rubin was the head of the Treasury. He heard about it, and so I'm told he started a task force, but it wasn't on getting rid of the 100. It was not, He learned about the 500-euro note coming from my paper, and he said, oh, maybe we should have a $500 bill. <laughs> so it's much better. I think people are, uh, you know, they need to raise more money uh, all around the world. Uh, there are terrorism issues, immigration, justice departments, and central banks are very interested because they don't know what to do. The cash is one of the reasons that they have trouble with negative interest rates, that it's pretty, you know, not as effective as it could be.